What is up, everyone? This is Britt, and I'm excited to shoot an episode today for the Live Better LBK podcast. And today, I actually have Coach Angelica joining me. We're going to be covering, um, just going through some details on taking on challenges. We just wrapped up our summer challenge this past weekend, so we'll dive into a little bit of that and then also get her uh, perspective, her tips on you know, what she thinks about going into uh, certain challenges. So Angelica, what's up? How are you hey, doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing pretty good. So uh, how's your day been so far? So far, so good. It's that first Sunday of the school year for me. So those Sunday night, um, I guess jitters are setting in, but glad to be here with you and doing this. Yeah. This is always fun. Yeah, this is awesome. And, and so... Uh, the summer is coming to a close, huh? Yeah, this was a interesting summer. It was just kind of fast and I had a lot going on, but um, just kind of kept me motivated to get into the new school year. So as sad as I am that it's over, I guess, I'm actually pretty excited that we're on to better things and starting fresh. Yeah, yeah. and it just seems like too that every, like as far as events, schedules, everything just starts up. Uh, and now that everything's pretty much, for the most part, back to normal compared to the last yeah. couple of years that it's like full on. Yeah. I, <laughs> I mean, as soon as we open those doors tomorrow, we'll have a full schedule. I mean, I've already looked at different athletic events and that kind of thing. And everybody's just going. Oh, yeah. Back to normal, which is which is good. We needed it. Right. I know. Well, awesome. So today's topic is all about... Uh, in particular, fitness and nutrition challenges. We just wrapped up uh, the summer challenge we do here at NC Fit Iron Roots. And just to give you a little in-depth uh, look at what that is involved or involves, is uh, it actually started uh, quite a bit, uh, quite a while ago. And uh, for the challenge, uh, it's based off attendance, uh, login miles, which can be walked or ran. And then uh, at the end, it, we do a way in and then we do a way out, basically. And then it's based off the percentage of uh, your uh, body weight. So mm -hmm. off each, uh, each individual, not, mo not necessarily the most amount of weight you've lost, because obviously that'd be unfair, <laughs> but right. based on the in individual. And so really the, the biggest challenge, uh, in my opinion, uh, with the summer challenge that we, we do is really just uh logging that extra work in for the mile um, yes so it doesn't necessarily have to be ran um so a lot of people just walk it but i think just also committing to either coming to do it uh before or after class and then the other requirement we have it does have to be here at the gym mm -hmm. uh mainly for accountability but a lot of people since they're already here for the workout they'll usually do it either right before or right after and so i think it just makes your actual workout even more challenging because you've already done that either prior or afterwards. So that's kind of the uh, overview of the challenge. And I know you participated in it. What were your thoughts about it and, and how did everything go? Yeah, um, I kind of went in this year with a different mindset, I guess. I just needed some motivation to, again, finish off the summer and not just get too relaxed and not want to do anything. So I obviously feed off of everybody here. And so I knew that if I kind of brought that same energy um, it would help our members, you know, stay consistent and having the leaderboard, um, with this year and using Wattify Rise and stuff that kind of, again, is another just little intri intrinsic, uh, motivator for me. But I, I like coming and doing the workout and then the walk after, or really this, that's all I did this year was walk just cause it's a little bit of, um, a cool down, uh, relaxed you know pace but then picking who you're going to go walk with and talk to them about their week and you know things that are going on and just another way to reach out and you know connect with our members here so that was my intention this year um but I've done it the last few years and actually won the first year I did it mm -hmm. um so that was again just something extra um that surprised me even but I remember like trying to track my miles and trying to get faster each day and um, just having something personal to tie into it. Of course, like the competition part of it's fun, but that's what kept me motivated was having an actual goal 
within that challenge mm-hmm. too. And that first one you ran, you actually ran the miles, Yeah, right? I think like the first couple I might have walked, but then I started tracking them as running. Even if it was slow, um, I wanted to see what my pace was and how fast I could get. Um, but I found out after that, that really I can run distance and be happy. <laughs> yeah. I don't like running fast. <laughs> you're, not, you're not concerned with the time. Yeah. And that's yeah. kind of how I am uh, when I was, uh, when I participated this year as well, that I, I mean, to be quite honest, I do not like running at yeah. all. I don't, I know I need to get better at it, but for me, it was just, okay, I'm going to do this. And my goal is I'm not going to stop. And if I finish yeah. in eight minutes or if I finish in 15, like it doesn't really yeah, matter. See, I wouldn't me. think that you didn't like running. You're a good runner. <laughs> no, I, I absolutely hate it. I do not <laughs> like it, but I think for me, it's just commitment. I, I mm-hmm. it's more of a mental thing than anything. Um, but yeah. And, and when I first started doing it, I, you know, I'm just not, I'm not used to it. I'm not a runner. So my shins, yeah. I mean, were on fire that first like two yeah. weeks. So, but it does, I mean, I feel like it goes a long way running in general, like for people that do run consistently. Now I'll be honest, I, I'm not going to go, you know, as far as like, all I want to do is run. Right. Like I, I, I really believe in that strength training, um, in order to just become health and, and fit that you do have to require strength training in yeah. your, your daily exercise. So I'm not going to go on to just be a strict runner, but yeah. it does. I mean, I, I, I feel the difference every time when I, when I uh, stay consistent mm-hmm. and really it's something I do want to incorporate even moving forward. Yeah. It, may, it might not be a mile like every time that I yeah. work out, but maybe if I can get like two to three in a week, I mean, that's a huge win for me personally. Yeah. I'm looking forward to kind of continuing it myself too on evenings that I can get home in a decent time um, and take a walk with Eliza and with our dog and uh, our neighborhood's really nice and, People are outside and stuff. So I've, I've done that before where I was walking or running every day in that area. And um, it was a nice, again, just relief for the day and kind of process what, what went on during the day, what needs to be better the next day, that kind of thing. So yeah, hopefully I can continue. So are, so you're not a runner that has to have headphones? No, okay. not really. Because I know you keep talking about like, you know, just... Uh, with, enjoying. Yeah, enjoying and, and yeah. Uh, like taking it in and... And I'm like that too. And I, I think there's something very, <laughs> this might sound uh, just, I guess, weird or some people love it, but just being up to see the sunrise or when yeah. it's super early and everyone's still like, or most people are still asleep right? and you're, you're kind of getting your work in. Like, I just feel that I've already won the day in exactly. some weird way. So it's, it's, I love running if I, if I can do it, like, well, and especially living around here. I mean, obviously, it's it's like 100 degrees outside right now. Right. So, uh, you know, getting in early, it, you know, I think it has a lot of benefits if, if you're into that. Yeah. But, um, okay, so for the challenge, you won the first one. And I forgot to mention what we what we uh, offer out there as a little uh, carrot to dangle, I guess, yeah. is uh, the first place winner has a choice of, you know, shoes they want. It's basically like $130 value. So, no bulls. Um, Reebok or Nike, yeah. uh, some of the uh, the uh, more common, most popular like training shoes. Um, but uh, that was uh, that's the prize that you can win uh, for winning first. So you won the first year. Um, you kind of went. In, you kind of uh, dove into what you were focusing on this year. Yeah. I want to ask you next. Um, what's your approach when you know like you're you're wanting to do a challenge? I guess for one, what's your motivation behind it? Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we're doing it in the gym, and I think community-wise too, it does bring people closer together because you're doing this all yeah. at the same time. But just in general, like your mindset of of doing challenges and and kind of how you approach them. Um, so for me, I'm just a data-driven person, and I like numbers. So having something to check off every day and look back on later is always helpful for me. So whether it be like a nutrition challenge we do here, or I mean, even uh, one year, I I guess it was last year we did that healthy habits challenge with NC fit and we were doing the tracking of like three habits that you were choosing. So it wasn't even necessarily fitness based, just three good habits for you. And then the EOE 40 that we did this year, those were all things that I knew I could find something to get better at. But I 
needed like i don't know just again the paper to pencil like tracking system Mm -hmm. um and then being able to look at pictures later or um and the nutrition one we kind of like diaried a little bit of how things were making you feel so then i found out like there's things that i don't need to be eating because it's making me feel worse than it does whenever i eat it you know Mm -hmm. like yeah it tastes so good but man i feel so sluggish whenever i eat this Mm -hmm. i would have never known that had i not had like pencil to paper and just um i guess learning from whatever challenge it is um whenever i started so i did 75 hard last year and when i started that it was really out of pure just like oh okay this seems hard or everybody's saying it's hard and i need a mental toughness challenge right now mm-hmm. and so the more i read about it and the more i listened to people's testimonies about it i said okay this is what I need now. So I guess my motivation just comes from whatever, um, is going on in life at the moment, but knowing that the challenge is going to make me learn something and be better at something at the end of it. Mm -hmm. So that keeps me motivated to finish and, and prioritize and, um, track my time and that kind of thing. Yeah. So the 75 hard, uh, just give us a, b- a brief background of what's involved there. So 75 Hard was created by Andy Frisella. He's um, the CEO at First Form. And he just created this challenge, but really it's a lifestyle. Um, if you do all the phases and um, commit to doing it yearly. Um, but it's a mental, like I said, mental toughness challenge. It's not like a weight loss challenge or anything, but... You have tasks that you have to do throughout the day. One of them is a 45-minute workout. The others are, um, there's another second 45-minute workout that has to be within three hours from the first one, so they can't be back-to-back. And that one has to be outdoor. Mm -hmm. Um, Then there's reading. You have to read 10 pages of some self-help motivational book. And picking a nutrition uh, plan to stick to. And I'm feel, I feel like I'm forgetting one. Oh, taking your progress picture a day and a gallon of water. And no alcohol. And no alcohol. Yeah. No alcohol, no sheet meals. Yeah. So those, I kind of just lined up with my nutrition anyway. That's why I kind of grouped it together. But um, for me, that one was one, I was making some really bad choices with alcohol. <laughs> like I just needed to um, take away the intake completely. To, like a detox yeah. somewhat. And it just wasn't making since the amount I was drinking or the um, just mental state I was in whenever I was enjoying those drinks. So that was most of the motivator. And then I knew that was right after COVID, right after I got COVID. Mm-hmm. And I had like just, again, been at home. <laughs> Me and Eliza mm-hmm. were at home for like a month and got used to being indoors. And so I said, okay, an outdoor workout sounds about right. Like I need to breathe in good air and and get myself moving outside and it was cold it was winter it was like our worst winter storm in lubbock so that made it difficult but we got through it (laughs) um and you went through all 75 days right yeah so when i started i hadn't listened to the podcast yet and the book was on back order so then once i got the book there was like a little bit more details in it um that i didn't know about so Technically, I should have started over because I was just tracking my macros. Mm -hmm. And in the podcast, he kind of mentions it like you should track macros, but don't allow any like junk. Like you can't really track that. So like if I had a Rice Krispie, like I would track it with the calories and I was fine. Or Mm -hmm. I thought I was fine. But even stuff like that, you're not supposed to eat. Yeah. And then um, the three hours between the workouts, I didn't know that either. So there was like Sundays, I would come up here and lift, and then I would go on my walk oh, run yeah. back to back, and I didn't know that it was a three-hour Like you difference. have to wait at least three hours, Yeah, right? and it's meant to like build the, um, you know, just being good with your timing and being yeah. able to fit that into your schedule and not make an excuse for it, So and not blocking out like your entire day just to work out. Mm-hmm. Um so there was those little things that I should have started over for, but I went ahead and just finished those 75 days just because it wasn't about those little things for me. It was the, the bigger things like the not drinking and, again, sticking to a plan with the nutrition part of it and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So, um, But, yeah, that one was a, a different, 
I go on a different challenge for me mentally and then not it not being related to anybody in the gym either like y'all knew about it because i would talk about it if mm-hmm. somebody asked but i wasn't tied to anybody with it like for accountability wise yeah. it was kind of all on you you're doing it was it on all your on own. me yeah. and there was a lot of people who were like that's crazy you don't need to do that and <laughs> it made it even more i don't know attainable i guess for me uh-huh and so i just had to keep doing it until i could get it done yeah but. well that's awesome I know, yeah, that seems pretty tough. Yeah. And uh, what I wanted to ask you next was in regards to uh, just challenges, um, are there any of them that you've done where you think you could actually continue doing that like full time? Or for you, do the challenges, are they more like a reset and you take maybe one thing from that challenge and like, okay, I know, well, I'm going to do, you know, this moving forward. Yeah, uh, I think, I mean, honestly, after 75 hard, that's kind of where I've landed with the challenges since then. Um, I mean, I learned a lot during that time, but it just wasn't... Um, sustainable. Sustainable with yeah. b- with the both jobs that I have. And I mean, even just with Eliza and stuff. So not to make excuses, but I want to take the pieces that I learned from it and apply it. So um, even with this one, this summer challenge, like we just talked about, like, I can make the time to go for a mile walk. That shouldn't be an issue. Yeah. The 45 minute walk was the one that was. So finding a happy medium between those two and um, yeah, taking, like I said, what I learned from those little challenges mm-hmm. here and there and um, making them last as a, as a piece of me, I guess. To continue. Yeah. And I think there's always two sides of challenges. You know, some people are really for them, you know, mm-hmm. cause what they do, their jump starts, A lot of the times they get people that are on the fence of starting something, like a reason to start. Right. Um, And then there's people on the other side where, you know, a lot of the challenges, like you just said, they're not sustainable. And so if you go in with this challenge that, okay, it's six weeks or 75 days. And then after that, like you're going to fall back off. And yeah. um, But, you know, I kind of land, I was totally against them to be quite honest, um, but I have flipped because... I do feel like there's so much uh, to gain out of them in, in what you learn during that time. And then yeah. really is that not, you don't necessarily have to take everything that you're doing for a short amount of, ch- like a short amount uh, for that challenge, the, the time frame, but just little pieces that mm-hmm. fit your schedule. Because at the end of the day too, a lot of the times it's, it's based off of uh, time, you know, time's a big issue. Yep. Um, and then access to like, well, can I go work out at this time or that time or do you know, uh, getting outside the weather, things like, so there's a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of moving parts, I think in, 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 uh, in that. So. But well, I had actually started it again, uh, right at the end of the school year, I guess it was after Murph. And then, I mean, I got to, I think I was like 15, 15 or 20 days in and there was just pieces of or things, events that I was going to miss and not, be able to stay on track for and i just had to like look back and say okay are those really the things that are worth it Mm -hmm. to miss out on something like this or are you able to pick that back up on monday and continue on so um like i had started the gallon of water and um uh, reading again and those little little pieces that i'd stopped doing but i liked Mm -hmm. um and continued on with the summer yeah so and i think too uh you know with the challenges themselves also is when you you just said it just now that you kind of evaluate well why am i doing this and then if it's something you have to ask yourself that it's that extreme where you have to miss out on something or uh something in your life at that time Mm -hmm. so sometimes you know the challenges are great but I think long term, obviously, if you find something that works for you and, you know, you want to enjoy like Rice Krispies and, mm-hmm. and not feel like terrible about it. Yeah. You know, I think you just got to find a balance of, of where you're at personally. Yeah, for um, sure. But uh, yeah, so the 75 hard, I mean, it, it does sound hard to me. I don't know if that's one that I'll ever try to attempt. But, I think um, everybody should try it because, <laughs> I, like I said, it's there's a lot that goes on in the background that I didn't realize, like even while I was running and that kind of, I mean, it's a lot of time to devote to yourself. And if you're in a position where you feel like, okay, I need to, you know, just be better at something. 
um, you'll learn it then. I mean, the podcast I was listening to at the time and the uh, books I was reading, like they were really random, mm-hmm. but it was all stuff that was educational for me in um, some way, you know, like I could take a nugget here, a nugget there out of mm-hmm. it. So, um, I mean, at the time I really liked running too. And I was like, Oh look, <laughs> yeah. I learned that I like running and it wasn't that I don't like it now. I guess it's just, I'm not at the point where I'm physically able to do it. So it, it made this challenge a little bit harder, but yeah. Um, yeah. Just like I said, you'll, you'll learn a lot yeah. if you want to try it. Right. No, that's awesome. And so uh, just kind of going back on our summer challenge with uh, what I wanted to touch on, just real quick before we wrap up is with the uh, body fat percentage, what I've been just my personal experience with working with people here recently is, um, you know, the challenge was a month long Mm -hmm. and it's, I mean, when you look at it, it's really not that long. (laughs) It's only four weeks. So, um, and I say that because like, if you're trying to lose weight and you're giving yourself a month, I mean, that's not a lot of time to lose right. a lot of weight. Um, right. So, you know, with working some pe- working with people, with some of our members that went through the challenge that, well, when they jump on the scale, their weight, it didn't change mm-hmm. all that much. Mm-hmm. And so it can be very, it can be very... Um, um, discouraging. Discouraging, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's the word? Uh, it can be very discouraging yeah. when you look at that. But what I like is that we just got this new scale uh, from InBody and it tracks other metrics outside of just your weight. So your skeletal mass, your body fat percentage, your BMI, um, and it tracks those other metrics. So when you look in and you dive a little deeper and so, you know, for instance, if you came in and you lost one pound, you're like, mm-hmm. well, crap, that's only a pound and over yeah. a month and I was walking or running miles and that's, that's all it was. Yeah. And then you start diving in deeper and well, you know, did your uh, body fat percentage, you know, did it go down? Did your skeletal mass go up? And so it's been interesting to see those numbers if you dive yeah. a little deeper. And, and for me, you know, I've, I've really haven't looked at the scale in a good while, just till recently when we started doing this challenge again. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, where am I at just uh, to kind of check in and see, um, check these numbers. But as far as like my body weight, I stopped focusing on that. A long time ago. Yeah, and that I think that's what I told you that day that we w- did weigh-in. So no, I'm not doing it because I I do attach myself to that number a whole lot more than again my feeling and and what my body's capable of and what um, strength cycles are moving and you know that kind of thing. So I refused this last time. And honestly, the weight or the scale at my house has been hidden somewhere too because I I don't want to attach to a number, but um seeing the i guess seeing the results yeah is better for me yeah um but i know i need i do want to track it at some point but you're saying seeing the results is more in like your clothes are fitting different yeah you know you, know, you can visibly see a change things like that yeah you're, maybe you're feeling better you're more energetic yeah there's there's days where um like i'll feel heavier or there's days i'd like turn around like oh where'd that muscle come from Uh you know like i didn't i don't remember having that um two weeks ago but um i think that's just a personal thing though because weight the scale weight has always been an issue for me no and And i I go up and down like all year long and i know a lot of people they they focus on that and it it can be it can be something where it's just it's it's such a negative thing if you don't Mm -hmm. see that dropping down but like you said if if it's something where your clothes are fitting better or yeah. you have more energy. Um, even if you're to get your blood work done and you see improvements in that too, which yeah. I recommend, uh, you know, for me, I would always avoid that. But yeah. now that I'm kind of getting up there a little in my age. <laughs> um, Luckily I get, I get a screening every year or okay. I have to do one for my insurance, but yeah. I look forward to it. Cause I want to see, am I staying where I was or did something improve? But I've got that coming up in October. Yeah. And, you know, I, I listen to a lot of um, the effort over everything, uh, Kalipa's podcast mm-hmm. and, uh, and Gabe there with NC Fit. And, you know, they're they're attached with this uh, company called America Health. America Health, I think. Yeah. And they do blood work. But mm. um, what's cool about that is how they're just trying to shift everything where you're doing preventative health care yep. and catching things way early on compared yep. to you get sick. Well, then now you go into the doctor and then like, oh, crap, like I've had this 
wrong with me for so long and yeah and at the and now it's you're reacting to it instead of trying to prevent it so right i mean and my family has a long history of diabetes and i mean all of us have been all my siblings are all doing a really good job at staying active and i haven't had that i mean even with me and my pregnancy and my sister and her pregnancy so um we've worked really hard to make a difference there and hopefully um pass that on to our kids and stuff and yeah. even my little brother this year or he's the one that wanted to start 75 hard and so i we did it with him and um now he's asking me for different recipes and stuff because he's seeing the the actual evidence of what when you don't take care of yourself what that looks like with my parents and um i'm pretty proud that we can be an example for him even oh and yeah and have that influence get, yeah, yeah get him going but that, yeah that's awesome so anyways, I wanted just to, to kind of sprinkle that in uh, yeah. in regards to our challenge. So last question here, and we'll, we'll wrap things up. Uh, for anyone thinking about, you know, starting a nutrition or a fitness challenge, um, what are some things that you consider before actually committing to it? Um, I always look at what time of the year it is um, because of school life and even just seasons. Um, and then try to calendar that out on like when it's going to start, when it's going to end, where am I going to fit my workouts in, um, and pre-plan as much as possible with my nutrition as well. And, um, what, if that's part of it, I guess, um, and figuring out like, what are my priorities for this challenge and how can I, um, maintain without taking away from something else. Um, so like with this one, it was easier for me to do the walk afterwards because if I came in too early in the mornings and was I really awake and trying to get it done just to get the check in the box or right. was I going to be able to connect with some people afterwards? Um, I think another thing to consider again is just what do you want out of it? Don't do it just to say you did it, but mm. um, what are the, what are the, pieces like, that you want to walk away with and continue on gotcha and being intentional yeah. about it yeah cool well awesome uh i think that's gonna do it for today i i want to thank angelica i want to thank you for coming in and if people yep. are interested maybe of connecting with you what's the best way to do that i know you're pretty active on instagram like, yeah my instagram is probably the main uh one i won't put my tiktok out there because that one's just uh uh for fun i think <laughs> but um it's AJ Zerman uh, for my handle on Instagram, but um, Facebook as well. Uh, my first and last name on Facebook. Yeah, yeah. Check out uh, Angelica. She's always uh, sharing a ton of content of her working out, and uh, yeah. she's, I mean, very active in the gym, uh, which is pretty cool. So, Angelica, <laughs> thanks for coming in, and uh, uh, glad we got to talk about challenges and looking forward uh, to the next one. Yeah, anytime. Okay, talk to you later.